So, greetings, ladies and gentle people. We are obviously going over a game today, Shibano Tormar, who you may have heard. He's just, um, he's just some, he's just some professional. I think he's played a game or two. Hana Miyoki is an interesting person, though. That is a person who has, who first had my respect uh, in the Japanese professional world. Because I do remember Hana Naoki always popping up in international matches when, and here is the huge, huge, huge difference. You had Hana Naoki popping up in international matches when typically the number one in two spots in Japan were not doing so. So for whatever reasons, you had the top players in Japan not playing internationally, but you had this guy always throwing his hat in the ring. And I, I always deeply respected that because I thought that I thought that was very, very cool. Tis true, tis true. Now, why am I going over this game? Some people might ask. Some people, not naming names, might even say, I'm going over this game because Shibano is my celeb crush. That is a vile accusation, and I think you will realize why I'm going to go over this game. You'll be like, that game is an amazing game. I can see why you're going over it. It makes perfect sense. I dearly apologize, noble master, implying you're only going over this because you love Shibano. And at that point, I will graciously forgive you, for I am a kind and loving god. So, we begin off with Black taking a 4-4 point. As you do, and white taking the coward's path and playing the 3 4 in the lower left hand corner. He's not playing in the upper left hand corner, inviting anything and everything his opponent could throw at him. No, 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 no. He's taking this corner saying, I, There are things I don't want you to do to me right now. <sighs> I tell you. I tell you, man. Truthfully, we can't really look down on him. Even Lee Cheng Ho plays uh, in the lower left-hand corner. I mean, and Lee Cheng Ho was top of the gold world forever, so can't really call him a coward. Except I just did. All right, so 3-4 from Shibano. Cool, a lot of things we could do here. We could enclose, we could go for a Chinese. None of these things are actually going to happen because, I mean, who encloses this way ever? I mean, there's mm, no. Double 3-4 from white, saying, please, dear God, don't 3-3 three, three me. Ha, huh? now you can't. Okay, okay. Is Shibby Black this game? I get it. It is hard to tell what color is which because of the color scheme from OGS. And you would think, after complaining about it all year, they would change it! But yes, yes. Black is Shibano, white is Hane Naoki. The gradient color scheme they have is atrocious. Move two, lost the game? Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. You can, oh, it's, it's fine to open up three, four facing your opponent, as long as you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, then you could, then you could die. That would suck. That would, that would absolutely suck. I, I 100% agree with you. Amateurs? have gotten into terrible positions. Even in games against me, just like playing five and six dons, where it's like, well, okay, you just gave me a ton and you got nothing out of it. So what are you doing now? Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Should we play basic potential? Yes. This is also a larger side though, mind you. Larger side is also here. Cause this is fourth line to third line. And this is third line to fourth line. So it, it's equidistant, but we give it a nod because black can expand along the bottom of the board. So largest side plus expansion, boom. Good reason to play it. Now, white plays away, and we are not surprised at this. Why aren't we surprised at this? Good question. Uh, if we do something as simple as just like pincer and our opponent counter pincers after jumping out. Suddenly we're under attack while our opponent's growing. And then maybe we jump out as a result. Now what? 
We're threatening to get surrounded on the left and capped in the middle. It's just, it's it's a fight that leans more towards black than it is for white. So it doesn't really make sense to go down that particular path. Unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. You've got a sequence that you have in mind. You're looking to play it. Then, okay, sure. If you know, if you know the dangers and you want to play it anyway, then, you know, have at it. It's all good. But no, instead, bam, white approaches here. Black backs off. We're seeing a lot of backing off nowadays. And there, there, there are reasons. There are reasons why. Good reasons. Uh, if we back off, we're picking up some territory, which is great. We're strengthening ourselves, which is great. Um, all these things are good ideas. If we're pincering, the classic rule of thumb is when do you pincer? And that is when you don't know where your points are coming from. And that's a very big problem now that we are very, very, very heavily points oriented. Right? Very heavily points oriented. So it makes sense to back off here. Be solid, get strong, get future points later, because, yeah, makes sense. Hello, Zealousy. One of the reasons is Bleep Bloop, but why does Bleep Bloop do it? Because of points. So, White backs off and says, I've got me a Vesna. And White's having lost Sensei, find himself approached. Pretty straightforward. Make sure no one can back off and get enclosures and, you know, things like that. No enclosures. Fascinating. Sure enough. Back off for similar reasons. And here is where the game gets interesting. Here is where the game gets interesting. I love these next moves for black. I do. I really do. Simple lean. None of this, like, complicated, you know, pincer in a certain direction or a certain number of lines away because you're looking to play a certain Jiseki, and then if they don't play the certain Jiseki correctly, then, like, you could follow up and get a good result out of it. You know, none, none of the complicated crap, right? What's he doing? He's just following up and making, making influence. Boom. Easy. Well, so interesting about uh, that is we're also... I, so the Kasumi is a thing that we're seeing. That's true. I'm seeing more of the small knight, though, than the Kasumi. But, yeah. So black leans, nice and simple and straightforward. White responds, obviously. Got ourselves a wall here. Allowing black to simply develop. Right? How easy is that? I mean, who would look at this board and say, I died? Nope. I couldn't be black in this position. I'd, ooh, too uncomfortable for me. Like, no one, right? This is good. We got a wall. We've extended. We got a strong corner. It's good, right? It's fan bloody tastic. Now, what do you think White should do about this development? Look at all this development. What should White do about it? What, what do you think White should do about this? Who knows? Who knows? You're White. You're seeing your opponent growing all across the bottom of the board. Three, three, wait, what? Three? Oh, dear God. Okay. He's built the framework without a corner, that's true. But more to the point, the problem is this, right? How many lines are here? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's almost ten. Oof, Tanuki. You guys aren't falling for it. I'm so sad. You're supposed to be like Oh boy, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop everything we're gonna be doing and we're gonna try to reduce because we can't let him grow. Oh no, that would be bad. And then I'd be like, ha 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 ha, you see, that is the thing that you don't want to do because if you start reducing, 
then you're not developing any points for yourself, your opponent just gets stronger, takes another large move, and then you just slowly start falling behind. So that was that was the, that was the script I was hoping for. Instead, you didn't fall for it. So Tanuki, yeah, exactly. We go corner side center. There's a corner open still, so we can develop it. It's true. Way to go. I commend all of you for not falling for the mistake of trying to reduce this. And you might say, but wait a minute, I did want to reduce this. I was just too afraid to say anything. That's okay, but mind that problem. Like, for example, uh, something simple here, I don't know. Let's, let's do this, like, stupidly. We're going to play, like, I don't know, here, and then we're going to jump away. Excellent. And then maybe black takes this one. Now what? You have to play here. Right? Now what? You need to somehow defend this. Where's our territory? Is white. Like, black's getting in all the big points. You got to approach this corner, got to approach this corner, got to develop the bottom, got to try to develop at the top. This corner's still his. I mean, dude. All the big moves are going to what? Are going to black, sorry. All because we tried to reduce too early. Makes you think. So, white approaches, black backs off. Old Jaseki is old. And then black's like, ha 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 ha. You try to you you playing too small, man. We're not going to we're not standing for any of that. So he extends and extends and extends. And then with Sante we lean and lean. Then play a huge move. How simple was that? Who wants to be black now? Look how look how amazing this is. He's just pulled eighth line uh, an eighth line moyo out of his booty across ten lines. He's staring at eighty points on the board right now. Now I'm noticing people are not saying they you want white. Really? Why do you want white there? Why do you want white? Feel it like black is going to lose or else bass would not show this. <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. So fun fact. We don't li we're not currently in the era of Moyos. We're in the era of territory. White white uh, is favored currently by uh, AI. AI doesn't believe in this. So okay. Okay. All of you naysayers, how would you reduce this? It's 80 points. You have to reduce it. What do you do? You, who does not want to play black, but white. So it's going to be attacked for... It doesn't matter. That'll never be enough. That'll never be enough. You have to reduce it. Leaning... You could lean on the left. Uh, force K15 to live. You'll probably give an extra 10 points away to your opponent as he makes a base. Now you're in 90 points. Plus the upper right. Now you're in 100 points. This board can't be played. This lives. There is no variation in which this dies. Ever. Not even the bleep bloops can kill this. This move lives. This 8th line territory is about to drop to the 3rd 
freaking line. That's depressing. But, even though that's depressing, I thought, okay, it's, an, it's a less than an invasion. It's still worth going over, even though it's going to trash the 8th line Moyo. <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Why and how could you tell so fast? It's too much room. A wall, uh, two walls on opposite sides of the board it did not magically make the territory between the two simply because it has one move trying to join it up. So I go to the low stone, attach to it, it has to respond, you're going to get a response. It's too quick. So, it doesn't Hane, maintaining strength. And then white says... Try and, try and take half of it. It's not enough. Attach here. Who cares? Who cares? What are you going to do? Keep this? You suck. Black's like, no. I refuse to give in. White's like, okay. Now what? I'm not behind enemy lines. I'm not behind enemy lines. You can't kill me. There are rules against that sort of thing, you know. We live in a civilized society. If I am not behind enemy lines, you cannot surround and put me to death. Black highs on the inside, only way to create multiple cutting points. Now we're seeing shape developing. See how easy it is to live here? It just can't be killed. Can't be done. Black pushes. Looking for Aji. Note the connection here. Not this. Otherwise, there's this one. And territory. Why did what Atari from the other side? Atari from the others. Oh, this is get this gets you killed. How are you gonna make a light shape here? You have to connect uh hard, right? And then if you Hane, you're going to get cut. So this way lies disaster. This into light shape is smexy. So, all right, we do the uh, push, push, push. See which way it blocks. There's that way. It means this is Sente because double height headed two and three stone because if you Hane, it's like only three liberties here, so it's cool. Uh, not there anymore. Trying to surround. Making shape. Beware of sen beware of Sentai. You don't want to give it up when you're trying to live like this. Gotta be careful. Black says you are gonna be a heavy. And connect. Still trying to kill. I commend him. I commend good old Shibby. Good old Shibby. But think about this for a minute. Think about that for a minute. If white lives, 10 points. This is the danger of making huge moyos. If your opponent lives in there, you've just lost the game. Game over. End of story. Hane. Ugh. You can see the issue. Trying to get life. Trying to poke at shape. Main connected. Deny eyes. Deny eyes. That move, I hate it so much. It's so good. There's my eye. Blocks both. Grabs one. White's alive. From here, white is unconditionally alive. Cannot be killed. Cannot be killed. What is the move? 
to ensure he can't be killed. Anyone see it? Who can tell me what the move is? J1. No. J1, you just died. G1. Good. Very good. You can Atari and connect. That's as far as you can go. You have to play away now. Because if you try to play here, you're dead. So you're alive. You can't take out, you can't take out the eye. Which means Which means ten points. How much is here? I don't even know. Are we at fifteen yet? Can I get to twenty five, please? This game is over for black. From here on forward, there is no chance of winning. He built a huge moyo. White lived directly in the middle of it. Where's the profit? Unless a miracle can happen. Unless a miracle can happen and he builds... Somehow from like here to here with a leaning attack on the on maybe the star point. I mean it's it's no. Nah. That is why you have to be very, very careful with Moyos. And it looks like Shibby went too far. He tried to hold on to too much. Like, maybe if he tried to just do something like this one, or maybe even this one, it might have been better. Might have still been an even game. But going all the way up to here just leaves too much. It's way too far away to help out with the attachment. So even though this looks amazing, and even though many of us would die trying to dive back in there, because intellectually, we know that we can live in there. Because there's a wall on the fourth line on one side, a wall on the fourth line on another side. One stone does not, by some magical miracle, connect all of it and make it territory. Intellectually, we know we can live in there. But can we do it? I don't know. Don't know. I'm not confident enough to. Though I'll damn sure try it in the next game I find that I uh, have that's similar to this one. I'll die spectacularly. But it might be a learning. Might, might be a learning experience. It's alright. Black plays away. White's just like more territory for me. White's like, okay, emergency, emergency. White is just going to take his territory. He knows how much he knows how many points his, his opponent has. He could he could care. He could care less. Trying to attack the top. Note he's not losing the large points. Blacks after the top stone, but White's like, what about the other one? This one needs to live, bro. Taking a couple of points for himself. Not bad, not bad. Um, yeah. Whoops. Miss click. Yoink, yoink. There we go. And then Atari. And then here, because this is also good for... Uh, Capturing because Atari into Atari. Gotta play here now. More territory for white. 
can't even try to build the top. It's just uh, too painful. Connects on up. Black tries to live. But at this point, it it it's it's pretty not good, man. It's pretty not good. Trying to live. Blacks them alive. White says, are you really? Black says, I can co. White says, not this way you can't. Then this way it is. That's another thing that's very interesting. I want to point that, I want to kind of go over that again. A lot of people, I'm seeing this constantly, like white's up, right? This is where a lot of people would be like, oh yeah, just like back off, remain solid and, you know, close out the game. But what I've been noticing lately is the person who's up in a professional game does not shy away from a fight. Like there's a co here. And out of curiosity, I went back over this game. I plugged this particular position to Leela because I knew I was probably going to review it. I want to make sure I knew what I was talking about. So, yes, I confess occasionally uh, to make sure I know what's going on. I, I do double check real quick. And, yeah, even if this is just allowed to live, white still wins. Even, even if it's allowed to live. So he doesn't have to go to Co here. Doesn't absolutely have to. But it's still a weakness. So he's like, I'm fighting this. Yeah, Co. Sure. All right. I'll play to kill you. Backs off ish. We're kind of getting a little bit of uh, trouble, trouble spot here with um, the shapey shapeys. Got a bit of a base. Looking for his eye. Plays away. Connects on up. Goes and decides to get some more solidity here. Gets himself another eye over here. A couple of points in the corner. Not worth an awful lot. But, you know, some. Corner obtained. Pushing forward. Blocks this from growing. Because this could be worth some points if there were some forcing moves. Make certain this isn't going anywhere. Reinforces the connection. Keeps poking shapey shapies. Pokes more shapey shapies. And then finally white resigns. Or black resigns, sorry. Black resigns, black resigns, black resigns. Very short game. Because the lesson occurred very early on. And that lesson was simple. If you're going to grow Moyo, do not grow it too large. Very, very simple lesson. If you try to grow it too large, might work in amateur play. They won't dare try to invade that far. And even if they do, can they really live back in there without making a mistake and dying? Who knows? I'd say it's 50-50. It's probably 50-50 that an amateur makes a mistake and gets himself killed there. Right? But in professional go, you can see the danger. Make it too large, live back there, you didn't get enough attacking me, I win game. I win game. So, I would be very, very careful if you're building a Moyo. I know not many people do. Now is the era of territory, but it's a good lesson for everybody. For you to try to soar too high with your Moyo, you will only get burned. Because, yeah, this is one of the most 
depressing games I've seen so far. I'm, I, I hereby dub this the most depressing game of 2019. Made a huge moyo. Your opponent just smacked you right in the face. And that was it. Ugh. I love Shibby. This game hurt. This game hurt to look at. But it had a lesson. I had to bring that lesson to your attention because it was such, such a good one. Now, the real question is, how do you think he's going to play in his next game? Because this is Shibby's last game, played on the 5th of December. Do you think he's going to dare try to go for another huge Moyo again? Or will he be going for a super territorial style? I, I, I'm betting on super territorial. I, I will gift a sub if he plays influence again. Like, super influence like this. If he does this again, right? After this result, I will be pleasantly shocked, and I, I will happily gift a sub. So I, I can't wait till he plays again, whenever that is. I have no idea. And we will see. We will see. Either way, hope you enjoyed today's game.